Now let's talk about recruiting strategies here because this one, I, I I love talking to coaches about this. And, you know, right now, currently, you know, I think the number one thing coaches look at is a transfer portal. Yeah. Then JUCO, then international, then prep school, and then fifth in line is high schoolers. Obviously, when you got sent Mount St. Mary's, we didn't have the portal like it is now. But when you stepped into that job, and then we'll go to Sienna and George Washington. Yeah. But first, when you step in there, like, you only got so much bandwidth, right? Yeah. So what was your philosophy recruiting-wise? What Which of those five were you trying to get at Mount St. Mary's, and why? Yeah, we, you know, we always – I love high school kids. I love the – I love this progression that I have with young players going from young to old. Going from a freshman – who is just wide, wide eyed, wants to do anything to a seasoned senior that you can have conversation with and talk about um, how you want to build your program. Um, you know, actually at Mount St. Mary's, we didn't have, and then we, and I would say this, we always would supplement. I do believe in this supplement with your roster from the portal, which you can't find in high school. That was my biggest thing. So, you know, like DC area, for example, if you're six foot six and can move at all, you're going to be, Division one plus, like you might be higher. Like I always feel like DC area, mid-major players will go high major, low major players go mid-major. And they always kind of go a little bit higher. So a lot of times if a guy was a little bit bigger, it was just hard for us to get a bigger player from the area. So we would go to Texas, Florida, Carolina. We would start stretching out a little bit for bigger players just because it was hard to get them in our area. But if we could take a guard from the area, we're taking a guard every single time. So really understanding your job. Like one of the first things I do, Corey, when I come into a place – um, and this has really helped me every place I've been to build out a strong recruiting strategy. So if someone's listening, I, I would encourage them to do this. Go back and look at, at all the Hall of Famers and all the thousand point scorers and where they're from. Mm. Um, that gives you a blueprint that that's historical of where your best players are coming from. And then take the time to figure out, like, you know, maybe there's a small blip of, oh, there's a bunch of guys from West Virginia. Well, why was that? Well, maybe there's an assistant from West Virginia or, you know, really figure all that stuff out. Because that gives you a blueprint. You know, we got to when we got to GW, they had only had I think at the time they'd only had four guys make it from freshman year to senior year, to to be like good players and graduate. Like everybody was like transferring out or transferring in. So even before I got there and before the portal, there was all this movement that was happening there for the very best players. Um, and what you're talking about in in the A10, you need four top 22 players in the league to be your very best. In the MAC, you need three top 17 players, and in the NEC, you need three top 15 players. So knowing exactly what you need to be the best in your league is super important. Um, and I think people sort of, you know, what you need in your league and what you, and what you can get and trying to figure that out. There's some places where international recruiting is huge. So at GW, because you're nation's capital and because we knew guys were going to transfer out, like Jameer Nelson transferred out, Jameson Battle, we knew that was going to happen because the history of GW of really good young players says they're going to transfer out and they're going to go high major and they're going to have good careers. But it also says there's guys like Tyler Cavanaugh, James Bishop, guys that might go a little bit higher the first time that we can bring back in that will now be all A-10 players. So really having this full understanding of like your situation, um, I think really matters. So we've kind of done it both ways. Mount St. Mary's High School supplement with with transfer guys. At Siena, we actually brought in only brought in one transfer guy that year. We were going to do it mostly high school guys because Siena has such a rich tradition and upstate New York basketball. We felt like we could keep the guys there. And then have such a rabid fan base that love basketball that we thought that'd be a great option. And then we brought in guys like Elijah Burns, who was, you know, it was at Notre Dame, who was from Albany. He came back and was and led the nation in field goal percentage as a senior. And and Carmen has continued to do that, supplementing the roster with guys coming back home from high major roster. So I kind of give you that whole thing. I think when you look at it that way, it's not just about um high school, prep school. It's about, you know, the history of the place tells you a lot about what you can do and what you can't.